Brother Jonathan Butler to pray for.
verse 7. He is here. Seven. <laughs>
hand and shake hands with your neighbor tell them you love them this morning. And then after that, Miss Barry's going to come and say, Lord, just want to pray for her. It was a blessing to me to see Robert back up here this morning. I'm thankful. of Jesus evermore the same what a lovely name oh what a lovely name the name of Jesus reaching higher far than the brightest Star and did sweeter than all the songs they sing in heaven. Let the world proclaim what a lovely name. Turn in clouds of glory, saints of every race shall behold his face, and with him enter heaven city. Let the world proclaim. What a lovely name, oh what a lovely name, this name called Jesus, reaching higher far than the brightest star, and it's sweeter than all the songs they'll sing let the world proclaim what a lovely name oh what a lovely name this name called Jesus reaching higher far than the brightest star and it's sweeter than all the songs they're singing in heaven let the world proclaim for more the same what a lovely
morning. Uh, glad to be here today. I hope you are. Uh, appreciate the Lord this morning. Uh, I know uh, Kenny uh, talking about who do you seek, and uh, I thought sitting there while uh, Miss Beverly was singing that song, she does such a good job. There's a table spread. Has everything you need to eat on it. And at home, when I was at home, my, uh, my mom, she would call. I'd be out in the yard playing. I didn't always go. It'd get cold. But that wasn't nobody's fault but my own. Because I was called. You're called this morning to come to a table that's spread before you that you can dine and everything you take is good for you because the Lord has provided it. You made it either. Everybody likes to eat lunch. Everybody likes to eat supper. Sometimes it's green beans, cornbread, potatoes, different varieties, different style. I ain't never really found anything that wasn't good. That's the way the Lord is. He knows exactly what we need. And your, yours might be a little different than mine. But it's on the table. Just because I don't dip it out. Maybe it's not for me. Maybe it's for you. It's made there today by the Lord Jesus Christ. I appreciate the Lord this morning. appreciate being here. I'm thankful that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'll go to the funeral home sometimes, and Lonnie, sometimes they're getting a lot closer to my age, people I went to school with. You don't know whether or not tonight that you lay down will be the last time you sleep in your bed. You don't know the next morning you get up will be the last time that you eat breakfast at home. I don't know that, neither do you. But I do know this. That I made preparations because Jesus Christ died for me on Calvary's cross. And I accepted Him as my Lord and Savior. And I have a better place to go to. I have heaven to gain and earth and hell to shun. But I have a family there and we have a family here that one day we'll all be together. I appreciate you this morning. You might have a testimony, something on your heart. You obey the Lord this morning. Amen.
someone else. Reminded me of some preaching I heard this week. Uh, Hannah she prayed for her son and said, I'll give him back to you, which we know was Samuel. But a few verses down he said, and God remembered Hannah. You know he remembered you? On Mount Calvary. He knew us before we come into the world. He knew us before we was in the womb. He, he, we're fashioned. We're, a, we're a, a, a wonder of how our bodies work. You probably have to be a doctor. And I, I know they know a lot more than I do, but I'd say they don't know it all. But God does. It, we're wonderfully made. Someone else this morning. Someone else. If not, you'll be turning your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 55. tell you a little something. I uh, was watching Wheel of Fortune this week. and uh, That's usually my thing in the evening. I guess I've reached to that age, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, I'll tell you something that's a little funny. I guess you'll take it as funny. But I was sitting there watching it and uh, they had a prize puzzle and stuff and uh, they solved it. And uh, Pat Sajak says, uh, well, you won a trip. And it's two. And I thought they said Sand Mountain. So, I know my hearing is getting bad. I'm glad that they show a picture. It was to St. Martin. <laughs> but I thought he said Sand Mountain. So, uh, anyway, uh, you know when you get to a certain age that you uh, maybe need to get your hearing tested and the eyes looked at. So, But uh, I just wanted to tell you that today. Uh, in listening, sometimes we listen to things. And this morning I want to just look at this in chapter 55. We're going to look at the first five verses this morning. And I, I just want to talk about the Lord good this morning. You know, I read a couple of weeks ago, I never did say anything about it on Sunday night. Maybe one time when I was preaching, there was a couple of, uh, a, a church didn't have a pastor, and they were uh, having people come in and preach for them. They had one said, boy, I sure did like the preacher today. Uh, a lot of good preaching today. I really enjoyed the preacher. Uh, and then uh, another preacher come the next week and said, boy, I really... Like the preacher, he talked a lot of life about Jesus Christ. There's a difference, folks, of preaching. I can't really, I'll just tell you, I feel like I can't preach real good. But I know the one that can. And if you'll pray that he just shows up for a little while, it'll be fine. I'm just a man just like you are. I can't do anything without him. And I certainly can't do this. But this morning, I want to make sure that your heart, your heart, not your wife's, not your children, 
not your grandkids. Your heart is right with the Lord. I, as much as I love my family, you're looking at the one that has to stand before the Lord and give an account. I dread it. Because I always feel like I could do better. And I fell real short. But this morning, my Lord and my Savior will fill the gap. And He'll take these five verses. And if you'll take them to your mind and put them in your heart this morning, just let God talk to you for a little while. Okay? So you follow along with me. We're going to be in Isaiah 55. I'll start with verse 1. It says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall uh, live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Let's pray. Our dear, most wonderful, gracious Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning, Lord Jesus, uh, just in your name. We pray, God, for your word this morning. We pray and thank you, Lord, for everything you've already done today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the song service. But now I just pray, Lord, as I've all prayed all week, Lord, that your spirit just be here and take these words, Lord, and use them and just speak to hearts that people will see where they're at and know that you're God and that you're King of kings and Lord of lords. We pray, God, today that you just speak to hearts, those that don't know you, Lord, that they'll cry out to you and know that you love them and that you died for them on Calvary's cross. We pray, God, for those that are, may not be correct with you or right with you, Lord. We pray, God, that they see where they're at and turn and come back to you. We pray for those that drifted off, Lord, and maybe just a slow uh, drift, but now are far from you. We pray, God, for that today. We just want to thank you, Lord, for your salvation. I just thank you, Lord, for sending uh, your a son to die on Calvary's cross. And we thank you, Lord, for the grace of the almighty gift of God, your son, Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, for your word once again. I pray you hide me behind a cross and they just see Jesus Christ. I love you, Lord, and just thank you for our church. But I pray now that the Holy Spirit would just have its way and just ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. This morning I want to talk to you and just talk to you for a little while about this uh, verses here, the mercy that God has had on mankind. A lot of times we go around, uh, sometimes uh, pride is a, a subtle thing. I mean, that means it's a sneaky thing. It comes into our lives and we don't really realize it. Uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, as me, as being, I'm proud to be a grandparent. There's nothing wrong with that. There's pr- times to be pri- prideful of your children. You should be proud of the life that they've had. Uh, And they're living if they're living close to the Lord. Uh, But with pride in itself will come in, it'll boost you up when there's nothing there. It'll prop you up and there's nothing there. And I'll tell you this morning that pride is an arch enemy of the Lord. I mean, it's just something that deceives us. And I don't want you to be deceived this morning. Uh, Before you leave here today, I hope you answer one question. And don't lie to yourself. You either have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and He has promised to lead us home and to go to heaven or you can say in your heart that you do not know Him and that you need Him in your life. And today is the day of salvation. As I've done said earlier than uh, this morning, uh, we don't know our last time. We don't know that last second. We have no idea when we're leaving here. 
But we are leaving. We're leaving through the grave, through death and the grave, or we're leaving through the air. And I look forward to leaving through the air. It would be super nice. I would love that. Uh, but I don't know that. Uh, but I do know he's coming back this morning. So we look this morning, and I want you to see in verse 1 that everyone is invited. Everyone is invited. There is no condition here that resembles and says you are, not, you are excluded, you're not invited. Everyone is invited this morning. It don't matter if it's Jews or Gentiles. It don't matter if you're maimed or if you're uh, 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 blind or sick. You're still invited. When Christ was on the uh, uh, earth, he called those that were blind. He called the main. Uh, there were people that were concerned that gra grabbed them up on their bed and brought the bed and all. Uh, they didn't, maybe they didn't have wheelchairs then, Lonnie. I don't know. They, but they made sure they got them there. They got them to the master. That's the key this morning that everyone is invited. We see that in verse 1. But that thirsteth, you've got to have a desire uh, to have a thirst in your heart and your soul that needs to be quenched uh, this morning. And it's only can quench. You can drink water on a hot day. And I can feel it sometimes. You can feel it go down. And it seems like it just goes to every part of your inner body. And it just soaks up uh, today. But that's the way the gospel is. Uh, but you've got to have a thirst for it. Someone said this morning, we've got to understand, you've got to be lost before you get saved. This world wants to coast you along. Uh, everything's fine. You've got some money in the bank. Oh, uh, you've got groceries in the pantry. Oh, uh, we've got something to drive. Everything seems to be going good, but our soul is unhappy. Uh, our soul is uh, not satisfied. We don't have peace with God. Oh, we don't have it uh, in our hearts this morning. Uh, but we've got to have a thirst this morning. And we've got to have it so that we can be uh, come to Him and to be satisfied. We've got to have that this morning. But He says here to come to uh, waters. To the waters. Uh, the waters. It satisfies. It's something there that nobody else has. Uh, it says, uh, Jesus said, take the water of life freely. Freely he gives it. Uh, there's nothing cost about that. We talked about that some in uh, Sunday school this morning. Uh, uh, there's no one here. Paul talked about it. There is no one here that can brag and say, well, I, I paid for mine. I got mine. You know, I earned mine. Uh, no, it is a free gift. Now, there's religions that might tell you that, that if you do well enough, you can go to heaven. But it's a right out lie straight out of hell. Is what it is. Because this morning, there is nothing that you and I can do to deserve to be saved. It is a free gift of Jesus Christ, uh, but we are allowed to come to the water that God has made. He said, I've got a spring uh, that, uh, that will uh, come up in you. It's an everlasting spring. It'll bubble up. And what we're talking about this morning, you know, sometimes a well can get not completely stopped up, but it'll get a lot of junk in it. Maybe you've been away too so far it may have just about got stopped up. You've got to clean that thing out a little bit. You've got some trash in it. It's got to be removed so the water can bubble back up and come at full strength. That's what we was talking about this morning. The Holy Spirit came in with me this morning. Did you know that? So what, was you high yesterday? No. Nope. Was you feeling good on top of mountain yesterday? Not really. But he came because he died for me 30-something years ago, and he's been residing there ever since. He came in with you if you know him. The problem with us as Christians is we don't allow him to have all of us, all that heart. He wants to do some work in you. He wants to fix what's broken. He wants to look down with a magnifying glass and say, Come here. I've seen this. I've been all around your heart. You've got a problem right here. It needs to be fixed. And the only way to fix it is for you to come over here and notice it. See, I don't, if I don't know anything's broke, I don't have to fix it. But once I know there's something broke, and once in other words we've got sin, it might not be deliberate. It could be that somebody hurts you and you, you have a, 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 a little bitterness in you. Uh, 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 just some unlove. 
Uh, and it's got to be worked on. It's a process. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't happen overnight sometimes. It, it's, but the Lord knows what's in our hearts. And He wants to fix those things this morning. And we just got to, you know, the best thing that we can do, I mean, seriously, really, I don't care if you're 100 here today or if you're uh, four or five years old. The best thing that you and I can do is this. Come to the altar and say, Here I am, Lord. Here I am. I don't know what I need. I just know I'm not right somehow. Fix it. Fix it. I can't fix it. Can you fix it? I know he can. He can this morning. Uh, be sincere with the Lord. You know, come to that water. Uh, a picture of the Holy Spirit working in us. Uh, a picture of the Holy Spirit wanting to bubble up in us. Uh, to overflow us. That's what the Bible talks about. Overflowing spring. He wants the Spirit. You want to be filled with the Spirit? Uh, you've got the Spirit. You want another good dose of it? Uh, you ain't got to run around and do anything. you just got to say, Lord, here I am. And make yourself closer to Him and call out to Him and allow Him to have me. He'll work on it. If you desire it, He'll work on it this morning and He'll give you what you desire. He's not going to trust us with anything we're not going to take care of. He's going to watch out over us and take care of us. We've just got to surrender ourselves this morning. So, But He says here, uh, that, And he that hath no money, come ye by and eat. Come and buy. Don't hesitate. Uh, it's not any problem with most of us, I would say. If you need something, you will swing by the store. Do you shop around? Are you like my mom? Goes about four different grocery stores, waste more gas than you would if you just went to one. Uh, the point of it is, we don't hesitate to go and buy those needs that we have. Don't hesitate, because tomorrow is not promised. Uh, come and get that that you need this morning. It says, uh, come and eat this morning. Uh, uh, mate, that's what he's talking about. There's something different between me buying something and putting it in my pantry and me taking it out and putting it in a pan and cooking it and eating it. It makes it mine then. It comes to myself. It, uh, the Lord is, uh, we've heard about the Lord all our lives. Uh, we have seen Him. We know about Him since I was a, a child. We understand that part. But there's a difference when God comes and lives in your heart. Uh, Jesus Christ. He's my Jesus now. He, wanted, he was the Jesus before on the pantry shelf. I knew about him. I could go by and look at him. I seen it there. He was there. He was hanging on the cross. But he wasn't my Jesus. But he was when I accepted him in my heart. He is now my Jesus. He is making it our own this morning. We see that. But he says, buy milk, uh, buy wine and milk. You know, uh, uh, this morning, uh, that wine is a representation of joy. Uh, is your joy went away that you've had with the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, he, uh, that's where the joy is at in Christ. We can have that this morning. We can have that milk of satisfaction. Uh, we can have that. We can have that. It sustains us. Uh, people these days, and I, I'm probably just as guilty of it as you all, live on substitutes. We talk about that a lot of times. And uh, uh, food products. Uh, people are uh, uh, got. Uh, we call. I call it sugar diabetes. Uh, you know, you're not supposed to have sugar anymore. They'll substitute it though. You can get you something else to make it sweet. It seems like it. Uh, but we can't be a substitute uh, uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you need the real thing this morning, and uh, there's a difference in it. Uh, there's an absolute difference in it. We got to have that real thing more. It's the only thing that will quench that thirst that we have. It's the only thing that will satisfy our soul. And it goes further than that. It nourishes us, our bodies. It gives us things that you and I don't know we have need of. It's the Word of God and the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. We have that this morning in the Lord Jesus Christ. It says here, without money and without price. You know, that's an invaluable gift there that the Lord has given you this morning. Uh, it can't be bought. It is a gift of God. It is something that's beyond you and I can have. Uh, it's already been bought uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, we see that this morning, verse 1, without that price. 
uh, 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 that the Lord has paid for us. But we see here in verse 2 uh, today that we can have some things. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? Not bread. We look at things sometimes that won't comfort us. We search for things sometimes in a perishable world. Everything in this world is dying. Uh, your house that you built is new. Uh, 50 years from now, you'll have to replace something in it, whether it's plumbing or lumber or something. It's all decaying and going away, just like my body is and just like yours. Uh, but the Lord Jesus Christ we can't, uh, is, is an everlasting. He said, I promise to give you a new body. Uh, it's fashioned just like the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it is a, just like His. It'll never perish. It'll never fade away. It's always present. But we sometimes look in the world and it's things that don't satisfy this morning. There's things in the world that don't. So we need that bread that comes down from heaven. Jesus talked about it. He said, manna that came down from heaven, I'm that manna, but their manna passed away. It deteriorated uh, when it was feeding the Israel. Uh, but the Lord Jesus Christ came down out of heaven. Uh, he died on Calvary's cross, buried the third day, rose again, and sits at the right hand of the Father forevermore. Uh, he is alive forevermore, never to face death again. And that's what you and I have in life with Jesus Christ this morning. We have that this morning. Jesus Christ satisfies everything in our hearts. It says, And your labor for which that satisfies not, hearken diligently unto me. He's, that Those things that satisfy. John, John 6 talk about uh, 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 that everything that Jesus Christ there uh, to never hunger again. But we also the uh, see that uh, there's a milk there. You know, First Peter uh, two two talked about uh, uh, the milk, and it's nothing wrong with that. I like a good cold glass of milk. I like it. I like milk. Uh, it'll cool you off. Uh, it'll keep the heat off of you. Uh, but us as Christians need to move on from the milk as we mature. We need to get on uh, maybe over some baby food a little bit. Uh, maybe get off of it a little bit and get on some. Uh, uh, regular vegetables and some uh, uh, meat of the Bible eventually and I, uh, this morning. So we need that in our lives to make us stronger uh, so we can work for the Lord. But he says here to hearken. Hearken this morning. That means to, to, li uh, to listen, to, to, to not just listen, but to apply it to our lives. Uh, we're to listen and hearken to it diligently. Listen closely to what the Lord is saying to us uh, each and every day. It applies to us. We need not be just hearers of the word, but doers of the word, James said. And we need to apply that to our lives this morning. We see that. We see that as we uh, uh, take that every, each and every day. It says here that, uh, and that we uh, do good. Let your soul delight in its fatness. The kindness we do to ourselves. Uh, eat that which is good. Listen to the word of God. Uh, it applies to us. It's good for ourselves. It's good. It makes us happy. It feeds us in everything that we do. But uh, uh, we see this morning in uh, everlasting covenant in verse number 3, the everlasting covenant with you and with the sure mercies of David. What did David get? He understood that everything come from God and the Son, Jesus Christ. Those mercies that God, the Bible says that uh, you can read the Old Testament, you can read up in the first, second Chronicles, first, second Kings, and uh, you've got kings after Solomon that went haywired. Some was evil like Ahab, and some were, a couple of them were good. But every time you see that, they'll say, "I'll save this one for David, my beloved." He he, he does things, and this morning we've got that everlasting covenant with David, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is who he's talking about here. Those uh, uh, mercies of David is the Lord Jesus Christ. We see here in verse 4, Behold, I've given him a witness, a witness to the people. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is that great witness that hang, hung on Calvary's cross to the world. He has drawn all to him. The Bible said if you lift him up, uh, uh, he will draw all people unto him. Uh, he has done that. He, he calls, the call, the call still goes out each and every day. 
And we, we see here that it says that he's a leader and a commander. He's a leader because he helps us find our way uh, to the cross. He helps us find our way on our daily journey. Uh, but he's also here a commander. Uh, Jesus tells us and shows us what to do. Uh, he does it by example, but he also enables or gives us the ability to do the things that he's called us to do this morning. Uh, he's that that we need. Uh, each and every day. Uh, those that are called, or he also equipped. Uh, he doesn't just halfway do something this morning. Uh, but we see here the calling to who? Verse 5, Because of nations and other nations shall come unto thee. He's talking to the Gentile world. Uh, not just Israel, but the Gentiles. Every tongue, every nation, every person, uh, God has made a call to their lives. They're called unto the gospel. They're called to give an answer of yes and no. This morning, uh, there's a call that goes out uh, to your heart. And you've got to answer it. Yes, I'm saved. Or yes, I'm not. Or yes, I've been saved. And then yes, I'll do what you ask me to do. The calling still goes out. The calling still goes out for me on Monday morning. The calling to go out for you on Tuesday morning. Uh, the calling's always there. The calling is whether or not I get up in the morning and read God's Word. Whether I pray to Him and get, get in touch with Him again. It's an everlasting calling. Uh, I understand He's calling people to get saved. But He calls us in the walks of Christian life to obey Him and to do the things that He has called us to do. And uh, my Bible tells me that His his, uh, he's asking us to do things that are not hard. Uh, we're, uh, uh, it's for us just to lean on Him and for us just to follow Him each and every day. Uh, this morning, will you answer the call? That's between you and the Lord. I've answered mine. And as I said, I'll answer tomorrow. You know, but this morning, let God work in your heart. I'm telling you, folks, He's the only answer to our need. We'll look and search and go to places. If I had some problems, I could go talk to a counselor. I can go to go talk to a psychiatrist. I can do all these things. I, in, in themselves, there's probably nothing wrong with that. You just need somebody to talk to. Oh, but I'll tell you right now that the Lord can fix all those things. He can. We've got to get it on a write it on a piece of paper and drop it off up here at the altar, and don't pick it back up, and leave it there. That's the key. We've got to get it out of us. We've got to let God work in our heart. This morning, while they come to the instruments, and while they get a song, how are you this morning? Have you heard the Lord's call this morning? Do you understand that He has an everlasting covenant with us that loves us, He loves us, loves us, loves us. And this morning, while you stand to your feet,